Hello everybody and welcome to my channel. This is Sohini from South Bay, California and I welcome you today. For people joining me for the first time, this is the channel where we understand how AI scientists and enthusiasts, you could be students, you could be uh, in the AI uh, domain itself, but you're looking for a career change. In this channel, we understand what are the steps that you need to do to embellish your digital portfolio to then be successful in your next career move. So if this is of interest to you, please like and subscribe to this channel. In our previous video, we looked at how to enhance our LinkedIn profile in order to get our, the, the job interview call. In today's session, we will be looking at the other aspect to ensure that our profile is weatherproofed for job applications, and that is looking into the GitHub repo. Understand that all employers nowadays always look at our digital portfolio or digital presence in terms of a GitHub repo in which we have made original contributions. So from now on, we will be looking at our original contributions, which will be then hosted on our GitHub repo going forward. So let's get started. In today's video, we will be looking at a well done GitHub repo. What should an ideal GitHub repo look like? And then we will be going through uh, different use cases of when to use what kind of data augmentation strategy so that we are prepared for our interviews going forward to understand when to use what strategy and why. And finally, we will delve into the code base itself and understand the nitty gritty if there are dependencies and aspects that we need to resolve to understand that the code base actually works. So here is today's topic. So I mentioned that a well done GitHub link actually goes a long way, especially for any AI or ML engineer. And it's, it's extremely important to house original code uh, along with as well done documentation as possible. So I actually wanted to show you a well done GitHub link and it's, it's actually called the BCDU net and you can uh, search it on, on, uh, on GitHub uh, as well. Uh, the, the good thing about it is it's, it's extremely recent. So the, the latest updates are from March, 2020. So understand that, uh, as recent as, as possible work is, is, is good. Uh, it has a paper that goes with it as well. And of course you can go and, and, and look at the, at the paper as well. What I wanted to show is it's pretty well done because it, it has a very good uh, way of, of explaining how, how, how they have uh, you know structured the code. Uh, you know that it, it, it has Python 3, then it has Ken, uh, Keras with TensorFlow backend. Uh, each and every data set is, is well explained with the, with the model network and you know examples of, of uh, from uh, the you know the results table so uh, i wanted to show that uh, exa exactly the the paper that we are looking at for the retina so th this paper is still very relevant and you still see that it has the highest specificity so uh, i wanted to uh, mention here that this paper that we're talking about is not deep learning it's it's very simple machine learning using classification methods and it still has the highest specificity that means it has the lowest false positive rate till date however uh, f1 score or or your uh, overlap ratio has been increased uh, a, a huge margin uh, by using the deep learning methods that, that we have used here. So uh, it's, it's good to, to understand the relevance of, of the works that, that we are doing, and it, it needs to be kept as relevant as possible. Like I said, this is an extremely well done GitHub page. Uh, I understand it might be hard to do it in, in as much detail, but again, this is uh, something you know good to, to have so that this is something we, we want to strive towards. I wanted to show that uh, they, this, uh, you know, GitHub link actually uses uh, the, the next GitHub link that we are going to be starting today. And this is the, the, the new code that uh, we, we start this, this particular week. So, so far we have been looking at, this is my method one, let's call it the, the GitHub link one, where we've been using Keras as data augmentation. And again, this was the four layer in which you, you do, do your convolution and, and down sample and again, followed by your up sample. And we've used Keras for data augmentation. So we've already reviewed this uh, uh, data set pretty, uh, you know, good number of times, I will be linking, uh, you know, the, the playlist in, in the video right about now. Uh, and today we are moving to this next, you know, data set, this next uh, repository uh, that we will be reviewing uh, going forward.
So I wanted to go over the, the, dis, the differences, the main differences between uh, the two methods that we have reviewed and we will be reviewing so far. So again, going back, our topic has been advances in deep learning for medical image segmentation. And so far we've been using the unit for semantic segmentation using medical images. So the method one that we have looked at so far is the unit using Keras for data augmentation and this, uh, you know, the, the, the standard library and using Grayscale as well as RGB input images. And the second method that we will be starting to look at from today onwards is the unit with tiled sub images. So here, instead of augmenting the, the same images in, in, in a certain way, we are actually subsampling the images. So we take tiles of subsamples from the data, and now we get a lot of Im images from you know, a small set of uh, starting images, and then that becomes our, our starting input set. So let's look at the impact of data augmentation. So this is the method one on the right hand side that we have reviewed so far. And this is the, the different kinds of augmentation that has been carried out. So we see there is zoom, shear, rotation, flip, every single thing. And you know, these are the original images from one image we've seen, we can augment up to like 48, 50 uh, images. Again, zooming in too much is has, has not been very useful. So that's why we have to keep it within certain you know, limits. And this would be the, the ground truth, which is zoomed out and zoomed in in the same way. And method number two, that we will be reviewing from today onwards is, is one in which you break down the whole image uh, into patches of 48 by 48. And that's the size that is uh, recommended for this particular data set. And this is the, the sub patches. And these are the corresponding ground truth, uh, you know, the, the image masks that gets out. So what happens, you train from all these images put together and uh, you, you know you, this is your x and this is your y and finally this is the the, the test image also you start predicting the very very thin uh, versions of these blood vessels and then they are put together so it's sort of uh, you know putting back uh, a jigsaw puzzle and uh, you putting all the all the puzzle pieces together and you would get your uh, you know segmented retina uh, right after now, it's, it's important to understand when to use which data augmentation strategy. So let's review. This would be the cell, the histopathology or the cell images that we saw for the ISB challenge. In this case, both method one and two would work. So if you had, you know, taken tiled sub images, or if you zoom in, zoom out, shear and, and pan and, and rotate it, you will see different variations of the same pathology from different angle, in which case the, the membrane segmentation. So both method one and two would work pretty well in in this case. However, let's look at uh, this image and this is called OCT or optical coherence tomography images in which these are cysts, so subretinal cysts uh, that have uh, formed. In, in this case, typically method one would be more beneficial in which you, you actually do the keras, you, you know, you zoom in, zoom out, but not too much because in this case, if you had tiled this image up, you know, by 48 by 48, you would actually have missed the cyst. So in there would be a lot of images where you don't have any cyst at all and there would be only very few sub masks where you have a cyst. So in this case, a method one uh, should be preferred over method two. Coming back to uh, retinal sub images, here we see again, uh, you know, zooming, uh, zooming out, zooming in too much uh, actually does not help in, in, in learning the whole uh, segmentation, uh, you know, uh, segmentation of blood vessels together. So in this case, method two or tiling is, is actually a better strategy for data augmentation. Now think about it. If instead now you're doing facial action units, or if you're trying to do a, you know image uh, based facial recognition, in 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 that case, what method do you do you think would be better? Would method one or method two be better? In this case, you would see, of course, method one in which you have you know related you have limited angles in in, in which you actually rotate the image would be beneficial. Method two would actually fail in this case, uh, however, because if, if you for, form very small tiles from these images, you would actually have tiles only having your forehead or your nose or your eyes. And then you would actually not be learning that it's actually a face, right? So that's why you have to understand which data augmentation strategy works in which case. So that is the key takeaway from, from this particular exercise that we're doing is the same data augmentation strategy does not always scale to all images. You have to understand which one works in which case. A thinker, right? So that's the food for thought. Finally, we look at some of the differences in model implement implementation. So if we look at model number one, you see it actually goes in for four layers. So you start from 64, then it goes to 128, then 256, and 512, and then it goes to 124. So there are 
you know, four layers in which you come down. And then after that, there are four layers in which you go your up pool. However, in model number two, you see only three layers coming down and three layers going up. So this is a much shallower unit than this particular model. So we, whenever we are doing an apples to apples comparison, it's not just good enough that you take the same data set and you run it on both, both cases and you just report the final output parameters. You actually have to see that the models are actually different. In which case, and this is uh, this calls for our ablation study, which we will be doing, is what happens if you apply this, you know, a shallower model to the first augmentation strategy, and if you have a, a deeper model to the second augmentation strategy. So we will be interchanging the the augmentation strategy and the uh, and the the depth of of the unit in order to see which combination is actually the best, and that would be the original contribution towards our uh, GitHub link that we will be posting at the end of this process. Finally, I wanted to go over the new code base for this method number two, because today is going to be the first time we actually review this code. Now, this uh, code base is, is written pretty well, and it has a lot of details mentioning how you should be, be running it. But one thing that, uh, you know, this code is different from, from the previous code base is the fact that this is actually uh, written for Python 2.0. And in, in most cases, uh, whenever we are running TensorFlow, we actually have, you know, Python 3.0. So there have to be some changes that have to be made in the in the code base to resolve these dependencies on, uh, you know, the software version. But there are very small changes, and I'd like to go over these small changes so that we can quickly understand uh, what we need to do in, in such cases where uh, we have uh, dependencies, you know, issues with the dependencies. So let's... Uh, look at a, a very simple, uh, you know, example first. So this is, you know, the, the sample of, it, it's called the prepare data sets drive. And you will see the, the, the major difference between, you know, Python 2.0 and 3.0 is the print statement. You see, in this case, you just have a print and space. However, as soon as you go to Python 3.0, you actually have to put parentheses. So in every single print statement, you have to include these parentheses. That is your step number one. And step number two, you will see that if you go to, uh, you know, the, the main function, which is your prepare data sets, uh, or your run training or your run test, you will see there's this uh, function called import config parser. And this config parser is again, uh, reliant on Python 2.0. But as soon as you go to Python 3.0, you actually have to make this particular modification, you say from six dot moves, import config parser as config parser. So I will include these two changes in the description box below so that you can, uh, you know, include uh, implement the same. And in this case, uh, uh, for for my uh, implementation, I will be using the the back end will not be Theano, it, it's, it's going to be uh, TensorFlow. And that's pretty much it. Uh, as soon as you make these, these small changes, you will be able to, to run. So the first thing that will happen is you need to do prepare data sets. And if you do prepare data set, what it will do is, uh, uh, let me show you, it will create these uh, HDF5 uh, files. And what these files are, it's just, uh, it, it's reading all the files together. So it's the image along with the ground truth, along with the image mask. All these three are being read together. And it is doing the same thing for, you know, for the test images and uh, for your train images separately. So whenever uh, the, the model is, is actually running and, and extracting the, the, the sub patches, the 48 by 48 patches, it's not reading the images at that particular point of time. It's just faster to reach the HDF5 uh, files at, at that particular point. So that's pretty much it. So you unpack the data and you, you know, run the pre, you know, pre-process uh, and then it's a retina on NN underscore training dot PY, which should, shall be run. And we will be reviewing the results next week onwards. Thank you.